Okay, so welcome everyone uh, to uh, another of our uh, web seminars uh, uh, in pediatric surgery. This is a, a series of uh, uh, seminars on controversies in pediatric surgery. Uh, and today with us, uh, um, we have uh, uh, Salvatore Cascio from uh, uh, Dublin, Ireland, uh, and uh, Sameh Shehata from uh, Alexandria in Egypt. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, with us about orchidopexis. And specifically, we're going to talk about uh, the Fuller Stevens uh, technique, I think everyone is quite familiar with. Uh, and then uh, Professor Shahata will uh, uh, tell us about his technique. Uh, so um, I will introduce uh, Professor Casho, who is uh, uh, our first discussant of the day, Salvo is a, a fellow countryman for me, uh, born in Italy, but then uh, um, trained uh, uh, in uh, the UK, in, Ar in Ireland, uh, uh, in the UK, but also with uh, a period uh, in Adelaide, uh, where he did a fellowship uh, in uh, minimum invasive surgery, so in Australia. Uh, he's an assistant uh, professor at the University College of Dublin, chairman of the examination committee of the European Board of Pediatric Surgery. Of course, he's a, a member also of the, the educational uh, uh, office of UPSA and uh, a member of the edit executive editorial board of Pediatric Surgery International. He's published uh, quite a series of papers. He's a pediatric surgeon with a a specific interest in uh, pediatric urology and many years of uh, practice at first in Glasgow and then I think for the last five years Salvo in uh, Dublin. Yes, that's, right. that's right, yes. Uh, where you first start uh, uh, almost 20 years ago doing research with PREM, so uh, right. closing the loop. And so without further ado, we're really looking forward to hearing uh, your presentation about the Forrest Stevens technique. Um, Augusto, thank you very much. I would like to thank you, Professor Zani and Professor Laka, uh, for your kind invitation to talk about Father Stevens and obviously Miss Gaia Tamaro for her always perfect organization of this uh, webinar. So let's share my slide with you. And uh, so I uh, hope you can see everybody. Can, I hope, can you see my slides? Yes? Yes. Uh, okay, yes. perfect. Okay. So uh, so the question is really uh, what we have learned from 62 years of Father Stevens or Kidopexy. Uh, this is one of those uh, techniques, you know, that uh, here we are. So that uh, basically we all talk about Father Stevens or Kidopexy, but uh, uh, we all do in a different way. It often happens in pediatric surgery and pediatric urology that uh, we have one uh, surgical technique, but we all do variation to the team. For example, I would like you, you know, people who attended this webinar to think the way you do your father stimulus or kiopexy. First of all, what sort of testicle would you apply this technique? All intra-abdominal testicle or the one were really highest? One centimeter, two centimeter, or three centimeter from the internal ring. And then do you do a low ligation of the testicular artery or you do an eye ligation of the testicular artery, more than two centimeter from the testicle? You divide the vessel at first stage or second stage? You do a single stage or two stage for the Stevens or Kidopexy. And then the second stage, you do open or laparoscopic. Do you spare the gubernaculum or not? And then do you bring the testicle down via the inguinal canal or to the conjoint tendon? And then what sort of time do you spend, do you, do you wait between the first and second stage? So for a minute, think about all these different questions that I put in my first slide, because I'm pretty sure all of us has different answers to this. Even talking to my colleague around here in Dublin, you know, we all have different answers. It's fascinating how there's a variability in this, but we all talk about Father Stevens, but we all do different things. So uh, the, this is the layout of my talk, you know, briefly, very briefly, I will go through the anatomy of the testicular vascularization. Then I'll go to the history of the procedure. You know, 62 years is a long time. Most of us were not even born, you know, at that time when the, these two great surgeons described uh, the surgical technique. And obviously through the years has been gone through a significant amount of modification by different authors and for different reasons I will go, I will uh, go through. And then we'll mention the indication for the operation. I just briefly described the surgical technique. And then I will mention my frustration in the sense that I, looking through the literature, I, there is a new, huge amount of limitation when we assess the real result of this technique. 
then short-term and long-term outcome of the Fowler-Stevens. And then two questions I also asked myself was, what, is the, what happened to the test when we divide testicular volume? Where that, which study they really assess testicular volumes in the, in the, you know, after ligation of the main artery of the test, the testicular artery. Finally, you know, obviously, I will also briefly mention histological change. And finally, we draw some conclusion of this uh, technique. What we really can say, what is the evidence which supports uh, this technique? So, um, in terms of anatomy, the testicle is vascularized by three arteries. Very, very briefly, we have the testicular artery, which comes from the aorta. And then we have the uh, cremasteric artery, which is a branch of the inferior epigastric. And then we have the differential artery or vasal artery, which is a branch of the internal iliac or superior vesicle. So three arteries, testicular, cremasteric, and differential artery. Now, as I said, the technique was described in 1959, so 62 years ago, quite some time ago, but these two eminent pediatric surgeons, in particular, Frank Douglas Stephen, was a quite distinguished pediatric surgeon and is uh, certainly remembered for his study on the embryology of the of congenital abnormalities, and in particular of the urinary tract. In 1983, he published a textbook entitled Congenital Malformation of the Urinary Tract, which is really a, a, a fantastic book on embryology. He was then appoint, he was appointed head of surgery and research in 1952 in the Royal Children's Hospital in Melbourne. And then he was really inspired and encouraged many young surgeons. I just remember Durham Smith, for example, Robert Fowler, Robert Fowler and Frank Douglas Smith published together a seminal paper on the role of testicular vascular anatomy in the salvage of high understanding testicles. And this was published in the Australian and New Zealand Journal of Surgery in 1959. Now, this paper is quite fascinating. I read with a, you know, with a, with a great interest and it's basically, um, it's a 15 or 16 pages uh, paper and the, and the first part of the, of the manuscript is about the studies on testicular vascularization. In particular, uh, they uh, presented some arteriographic and microradiographic study, which were done a few years before by Harrison Barclay in 1948 and 1949. If you can see an arteriographic picture on the right side of my slide, which is taken from their paper, and basically you can see how, you know, the, the, it's really shown the testicular artery there, and then the cremasteric artery, and then the differential artery. And then all these collaterals there, you know, that, that between these three arteries, especially between the differential artery and testicular artery, when in the, going there in the lower pole of the testicle. So the whole idea of their technique is based on the fact that the testicular artery is not an end artery. And there are microanastomoses you can see there, you know, between the testicular artery, the differential artery and the cremasteric artery. And this is the reason we are relying on this micronastomosis, you know, to feed the testicle once the testicular artery is, uh, is divided. Again, they also uh, mentioned that these septal branches of testicular artery form uh, beneath the tunica albuginea, what is called the tunica vasculosa. And then the vessels go deeply into the mediastinum of the testicle double back upon themselves and go back to the periphery. So, and again, it's shown in, on the right side, you can see this uh, um, angiographic study. Now, so what, what the technique, the technique relies totally on the division of the testicular artery, which is divided as far as possible away from the testicle, some two, three centimeter away from the testicle. So they, the authors recommended a high division of the testicular artery and they, this will preserve preserving the collaterals. And we can see in this picture there, all these collaterals coming from the vasal artery will obviously increase the blood flow once the testicular artery is divided. And this is, these are essential for the success of the operation because these collaterals will feed the testicle once the testicular artery is divided. So the anastomo also they said that anastomotic vessels may join with the main trunk just above the testicle. Now it's also interesting to see that you know in uh, that time they used this technique for twelve testicles, and two were abdominal, eight were canalicular, one was emergent, and one was in the super superficial inguinal pouch for a total of 12 testicles. It is pretty obvious that most of us will not use this technique for a canalicular testicle, but obviously 
we are talking about 62 years ago, so we can give them, you know, a bit of allowance for, you know, at that time, it's slightly different. Now, the result they presented was a good result for eight testicles, 66 percent, atrophy for two, two testicles went to atrophy, so 17 percent, and two testicles were high in the scrotum for 17 percent. Now, it is, they also mentioned in their paper, they mentioned what is called the bleeding test. So basically what they said was, if you cut the, sperm, the testicular artery, and then you see the bleeding so, uh, from the distal end, would suggest a good you know, a collateral, so a good, you know, a blood flow via the collateral. And they call it bleeding test. So obviously the bleeding test is positive, would suggest good you know, flow via the collateral. So the bleeding test is negative, it's not good. So the bleeding test is in a, in a way is a, is a good prognostic factor for a possible success of the procedure. Now, it is extremely interesting to point out that, you know, they already at that stage, so in 1959, they already said that this technique should not be used, all, you know, in every case, but only in an anatomically appropriate cases, in particular, if there is a long loop bus. Also, they recommended to avoid skeletonizing the vas because any skeletonization of the vas will destroy all the collaterals that from the vas will go, will feed, you know, the distal end of the testicular artery and therefore will increase testicular atrophy. And also it's very important to preserve the strip of peritoneum over the vas because this is where all the collaterals are lying. So this contraindication for the procedure, either, either if there is a short cord or in apoplastic testicle. And the reason is very simple, because apoplastic testicle have a lack of vascular anastomosis. If they have a lack of vascular anastomosis, this technique is never going to work. Now, the modification over the years was Philip Ransley in 1984 in Great Ormond Street, who proposed a stage approach. He, this was, uh, had been suggested in the past by Snyder in 1975, and the whole idea was to reduce the risk of partial or complete atrophy, which was up to 30%, it so was quite high. Now, Phil Rasley adopted a stage approach in 10 patients, 13 testicles. Now, eight of the 10 were patients with prune belly syndrome. Now, the interval ranged from five to 18 months. And interesting, it didn't, it didn't have any atrophy at all. So none of these 30 testicles went to testicular atrophy. This was in contrast to a two of six testicle contralateral who had a single stage for Stevens and went to the atrophy. So 33% 30, of the contralateral testicle who had a single stage for Stevens, he went to atrophy. So it's pretty significant, 33% atrophy rate, single stage, zero with a two stage. So hence, Peter Ransley recommended, let's do a, a two stage approach. Now it was then in 1991, Blum and Elder who recommended a laparoscopic two stage uh, for Stevens orchidopexy. Now we go further on and we have Stephen Koff from Columbus, Ohio, who was saying something completely different. He published a paper in the Journal of Virology where he said, look, uh, the Forrest Stevens concept is not valid. Okay, so there's no point to do high ligation, we should do a low ligation. So it's, you know, as close as possible to a testicle. So it's quite a revolutionary, you know, concept, you know, com compared to what uh, the first authors have uh, said. The whole idea is that if you ligate the vessels, that sorry, the spermatic artery, the testicular artery close to the testicle, you increase the blood flow via the vasal artery. And you can see there are low ligation there, and all these vessels will feed from the testicular artery, will feed the, the vasal artery, increasing the blood flow in the differential of vasal artery. And also, what Koff said is that you know you, with this will allow a greater separation between the two limbs of the vas with therefore a greater mobility of the testicle and reducing any possible tension. So the testicle will lie down into the scrotum in a much more comfortable way. So that was, uh, was uh, said in 1996. He presented a, quite a good result. I would say I would sign for a 93% success rate in one year I have to say it's pretty good and atrophy rate only a 7%, which is overall is a very good result. So, this is the first question I'm going to ask to the people attending this webinar and see if I can launch that question, which will probably be the most difficult thing. So in Father Stephen orchidopexy, uh, 
in fire extinguisher of epoxy, do you clip ligate a sticker vessel high away from uh, away from the testicle, low, close to the testicle, uh, or you have no preference? Now, um, let's see if I can do it there. Salvo, shall I start? A lunch, a, a lunch. I just okay. press the lunch. Is, is it gone? Yes. We can just see one question. also the other questions, but that's okay. You can see the whole four. Okay. Okay, well, let's... Um, and he wants let's us to submit uh, all uh, at once, so... Well, maybe... yeah, the idea was one by one, but once you got all four, you can answer all four then. And, and, and so I avoid the stress of sending the other three. <laughs> so uh, I'll leave about less than a minute and then we'll go ahead with the presentation. Is it okay? So two voted, five voted, so far I can see it. The answers are coming. Or we can start discussing the uh, answers coming from the audience now, if you can see them. Yeah, I can see there's 31 or 47 who have voted. Mm -hmm. And then it seems that 53% uh, go for a high ligation uh, away from the testicle. And then 44% uh, going to low for low ligation. So it's basically nearly 50-50, I would say. And then... 3% have no preference. Okay. So I think we can, I can end the poll, I suppose. Um, okay. So it's interesting. So it's basically 50, 50 at the moment. And uh, uh, let me see. So can you still see my screen? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so basically, again, as I said at the beginning, we are all talking about the same technique, but each of us is different. So again, the, the poll shows that, you know, the audience is split between the high ligation and low ligation, uh, we're having 50% and 50%, and uh, that's where we are. Now, going back to the indication for surgery uh, for the Fale Stevens or Kidopexy, um, in 2016, the, um, European, the European Association of Urology and the European Society of Pediatric Urology published their guidelines on the management of an ascended testicle. And, uh, and uh, uh, quoting from this paper, you know, the ESPU and UA said, usually testes lying more than two centimeters above the internal inguinal ring may not reach the scrotum without division of the testicular vessels under such circumstances, a Fowler Stevens or Kidopexy might be an option. So, therefore, the ESPU and UA recommend uh, a Fowler Stevens or Kidopexy for a high intraabdominal test of more than two centimeters above the internal ring. Again, this is uh, fine, but also you will see the review in the literature. People also use the Fowler Stevens for low lying testicle into the close to the internal ring. Now, going, just mention briefly the Einstein specification of impalpable and ascended testicle is mainly for type 4 and type 5. Now, brief mention of the technique, you know, it's based on umbilical ports. I tend to use an open ascent technique and then two additional ports, a lateral to umbilicus, avoiding the inferior epigastric. Uh, and then, you know, uh, the vessels, the the testicular, the testicular artery is isolated, clipped proximally and distally, and I tend to divide at the first stage, leaving the testicle, the vas, and the differential artery completely undisturbed, without touching them, without any mobilization, just a simple division of the testicular artery, and then everything else will be done at the second, the second stage. 
Now, the second question we ask already is which interval do you leave, you know, between first and second stage? Again, we can see that, you know, the answer from the poll is again varies, showing again this variability, uh, variability. It says 6% uh, uh, of, the, of the people attending the webinar uh, do a um, second stage for the Stevens less than three months. 38% within three and six months, and the large majority more than six months. If I ask probably everybody why we live more than six months, probably not, can, no, nobody will give me a, a reasonable answer, I think, because it's no real reason to wait that long. But the large majority tend to live for more than six months. Let's see what is the evidence you know, uh, around it. You know, so what we know is that we want some time for the collaterals to develop, you know, uh, obviously for to feed the testicle. But we also know that uh, the increased temperature of the abdominal cavity induces interstitial fibrosis and reduce the blood growth. So, and we also has been shown by a million different studies that early oculopexy is beneficial for testicular function. Therefore, living more than six months, there's no benefit, you know, because the collaterals, uh, there's a, already developed after six, eight weeks. There's a study by a Cairo group in Egypt who's shown after eight weeks, there is already collaterals have developed. So I'm afraid living more than six months, the only thing we achieve is probably uh, damaging the testicle uh, further on. Now, this is a, a beautiful picture from Louis Braga paper published in the Journal of Virology in 2019. And that's the only picture, I, you know, which shows, I would, I, which I could find, you know, I didn't have one as good as this one in my personal um, uh, computer, uh, showing really the, the line of demarcation of the, uh, of the peritoneal, you know, mobilization. You, you really want, you know, a wide, a wide peritoneal uh, triangle or quadrilateral or whatever, just to preserve all these collaterals coming from the vas to the testicle. Because if we start dividing there, all these collaterals get destroyed and it's likely to end up in testicular atrophy. So this is the line of demarcation that we want you know, for the second stage um, in order to preserve all these fine collaterals, which hopefully they are going to feed the testicle. Another, another diagram taken by a beautiful article published in the JPS you know, uh, on the diagnosis and treatment of intra-abdominal gonad a few months ago by the San Francisco group, Baskin and Della Calle. And uh, so just to summarize the options in relation to Fowler Stevens, we, you can either do a high ligation as suggested by Fowler and Steven, okay, two, three centimeters away from the testicle, and the, or you can do a, a low ligation as suggested by uh, Stephen Koff, you know, uh, basically. But in any case, you are really relying on all these collaterals uh, which develop from the testicular artery to the differential artery or vasal artery to feed the testicle. Then you got some other option. I, you can bring the testicle via the internal ring uh, and then obviously through the canal, or you can uh, bring the testicle down via direct route, you know, the conjoint tendon medial to the inferior epigastric, which will be obviously shorter and more direct. Um, and then, you know, and obviously the, the path of descent will be uh, shorter. The advantage, the, the advantage of going through the canal is in some case, you can preserve the gubernaculum and therefore preserving branches of the cremasteric artery, which will feed the testicle, you know, uh, so will increase the blood flow to the testicle. So going back to our question, this is my third question which basically says in order to bring the testicle down, you wrote the testicle via the inguinal canal or via the conjoint tendon. Now, again, a, a great variability in the answer and it's fascinating. So 62% will bring the testicle down via the inguinal canal and 38% will bring the testicle down via the conjoint tendon. So uh, again, shows clearly how we all have the same technique but we all do different. It's really fascinating. Now, um, let's move to the literature review. I, I was a bit frustrated when I read all this paper on Forrest Stevens because there are no uh, randomized control trial. You know, one of those um, operations where not even a single RCT has been done, all the paper are in retrospective review. And then there are four meta-analysis, who obviously are based on uh, retrospective review. 
Now we've seen how the surgical approach varies from one to two stage, open or laparoscopic, could be a gubernatal spare or not, high or low ligation, so huge variability among different surgeons. There are some surgery, some papers, some manuscript performed by multiple surgeons. You can have a paper of one center, but there are 10 different surgeons who perform Fowler Stevens, I bet all do differently, and it's inevitably a, a surgeon uh, dependent bias. Now, invariably, each of us has different, this is a patient selection. What I might do at Forrest Stevens, you know, Martin or Augusto might do it different. So there is a, invariably a patient selection. There's a lack uh, of long-term follow-up. Most of the study are very short follow-up. The criteria for success are not standardized. You know, they're different. You know, uh, I'll, I'll mention briefly in the next few slides. And it's a total lack of histological assessment and a lack of functional evaluation. Now, in terms of outcome measures, you know, um, invariably, when we try to assess the stickle of viability, most of the study uh, done, is done by feeling for a testicle as opposed to a testicular nubbin. This is entirely subjective. There's no way this is scientific, you know, and uh, there's invariably an interobserver variation. Now, some studies have shown the Prader orchidometer which is affected by also interobserver variation. And also in some studies shown that it's quite insensitive to detect testicular volume, especially compared to ultrasound uh, in patients with varicocele. Then finally, you have color Doppler, power Doppler, which has been shown to correlate significantly with clinical examination, but it also has been shown that intratesticular blood flow especially in prepubertal testicles, sometimes is undetectable and can be quite uh, difficult to, to, uh, to measure. So no, it's not definitely, the, the, you know, it's also has got its own limitation as well. Finally, some study, uh, well, I think one or two has shown nuclear scan in order to assess the outcome. Now, going back, you know, in this table, I have put the result of two stage for Stevens, uh, mainly in relation to testicular atrophy. And again, quite significant variability from a 4.3% to a 28, nearly a third, 28.3%. And then testicular ascent, again, uh, quite a significant variability from 0% to a third, 30%. And then this is my last question of, uh, of the poll I launched. If possible, do you spare the gubernaculum? Now, the, of the audience, you know, 62% spare the gubernaculum and 38 don't spare the gubernaculum. Again, again, it's interesting. Again, variability and the amount of different surgeon, different, same technique, but different way we do it. Now, why the gubernaculum is important? Uh, the gubernaculum in, uh, the, I, I just want to briefly mention this paper from Louis Braga from Canada, published in 2019. Now the idea of sparing the gubernaculum relies on the fact that the gubernaculum is fed by the cremasteric artery. Therefore, if you preserve the gubernaculum, you increase the vascularization of the testicle. Uh, therefore, your testicle, the, sorry, the testicle you're dealing with will be uh, supplied by branches of the canasteric artery and branch of the French artery. Two out of the three arteries will feed the testicle. So therefore the atrophy rate should be lower. Now, what uh, Louis Braga has said, comparing gubernaculum sparing Farrell Stevens to conventional laparoscopic orchidopexy, the atrophy rate was uh, quite significantly different. You know, it was 0.6% 0, 0 in the gubernaculum sparing to compare to 28.3% in the conventional laparoscopic. So big, big difference. I would say an atrophy rate of 0.6% is exceptionally good. Test, however, the price to pay that with uh, gubernatal spain technique, there's slightly higher chance that testo might end up in higher part of the scrotum, 9% against 4.3%. Now, summarizing again the gubernatal sparing issue, the, you know, you see when you go uh, when you spare the gubernaculum, the, the testicle has to be brought down via the internal ring, via the canal. Therefore, there's a longer path of descent to the inguinal canal. Now, apparently, uh, A in 2007, as mentioned, it's not always possible to preserve the gubernaculum. And if it's, it's easier, the technique is a long gubernacle rather than a short, in disputing 80% against 30%. If the gubernaculum is, needs to be divided, it recommend to divide at first stage.
not second at the first stage. Now, I, I going through the meta-analysis, the most you know scientific way of analyzing results in, in nowadays. And uh, the first one was published by Michael Leonard Group in Canada, and uh, published in 2010, so 11 years ago. And basically, you can see a forest plot on Figure Two and Figure Three. So Figure Two is a forest plot of a one single stage for the Stevens success rate 80 percent. Forest figure three is forest plot of two stage for the Stevens success rate 85 percent. So a small advantage of two stage over a single stage. Now meta analysis in 2011 from China, uh, similar result in the sense of recurrence rate, success rate, testicular atrophy were found to be comparable between laparoscopic orchidopexy and open orchidopexy. Um, another meta-analysis by the Canadian Association of Pediatric Surgery published in PSI in 2015. They, they mentioned two systematic reviews, the one I already mentioned to you, the Canadian one and Chinese one, and 29 non-randomized controlled trials with all low quality scores. Success rate 83%. And again, two stage offers a small but significant advantage over one stage for the Steven, and then open or laparoscopic success rate, recurrence, and atrophy rate are very similar. Final meta analysis in 2018 success rate, again, conclusion very similar in all these meta analysis success rate 81 to 89 percent. Two stage for the Stevens better than single stage. Now, this is in this meta analysis, they said LAP is slightly superior to open, but it's the only study saying this. All the other have shown a similar success rate. And then, interesting, they say the atrophy rate has decreased from 15% to 6% in the last 10 years. Now, I want to briefly mention this paper is from Atlanta, Georgia, uh, because it was published, it was recently published last year, and is the largest series of a, a single uh, stage for Stevens, so single stage, not two stage. Success rate, 81%, atrophy, 9.5%, and testicular ascent, you know, is 9.5%. The authors in this in this uh, paper in the single stage was either sometimes laparoscopic in, in or open, and then they follow the patient up with ultrasound in 29 out of 42 testicles. Now the reason I, I put this paper because 11 patients had a follow up more than three years, and the success rate dropped to 64 percent. Not so much in, in different was not so much the atrophy, which was similar nine and nine point five percent. The difference was the testicular ascent, so which increased from nine percent to twenty seven percent, and then only two patients, so you know a very small number, had a follow up more than ten years, and both of them had a mild testicular atrophy. So what I'm trying to say with this slide is that you know the more you follow them up, I you know the more I think your sex rate goes down. This is the reason why the success is so high, because I think if we follow them up in the long term, it is likely that the success rate will, will go down uh, significantly. Now, success or failure of Fowler Stevens or Kidopexy, which are the variables affecting outcomes? You know, that's one of the questions. So one sometimes you end up with HSC that sometimes have a good result. You know, again, now look into all the papers published in the letters and be sure not to affect outcome, you know, age, high. Uh, high or low ligation, unilateral, bilateral, uh, distance, the testicle to internal ring, all this distance and location of the testicle to the scrotum, if we diatherm the clip to vessel, if, or, and then if the vessel divide or not, all these factors have been shown to not to have any significant uh, effect outcome. So the factors affect the outcome is accurate patient selection, uh, long loop VAS, it's important to avoid sclerotization of the VAS, and then preservation of the strip of peritoneum over vas and of the anastomotic arcade between the differential and testicular artery. So uh, briefly, I was going to mention testicular volume change after first even so kidopexy. And there's definitely, this paper from Tony Puri showed there's no testicular volume reduction after stage one and the 22% reduction, volume reduction after stage two measured with testicular ultrasound. And, but also, 83% of testicles were smaller for the mean for age preoperatively. So we're dealing with a small testicle at the beginning. And then postoperatively, two thirds were smaller for the mean for age as well. This was done 
preoperative with the ruler was measured and postoperatively with ultrasound. So the point I raised was is testicular volume reduction after Fallis Stevens due to abnormal testicular development or due to vascular compromise. This is extremely valid point. Final uh, issue is the, the spermatogenesis. We know that germ cells survive division of spermatic artery. This has been shown before study, Jorgen Torp in 1999, Pipi Salen Rosita in 2004, and two Egyptian studies from Cairo. And then we also know histopathology seems to be worse in boys who undergo orchidopexy in an older age. So only one mention of long-term follow-up. There's only one study by Chiro Esposito, and there is a, there's a quite significant lack of long-term follow-up in this patient. 12 patients were reviewed in age of 13 to 26 with a follow-up range from 10 to 17 years. The father steering testicle is always smaller. 17% went to atrophy and the large majority had a small viable testicle, two-thirds in the low scrotal and 30% high scrotal. I'm going to conclude this talk saying that the success rate of father steering orchidopexy is around 80 to 85%. However, we have to bring, you have to keep in mind there's a lack of randomized controlled trial. There are mostly retrospective studies. There are many surgeons involved in great variability of surgical technique. There's a huge amount of patient, patient selection and lack of standardization of outcome measures. And there's a lack of long-term follow-up. Now, it, as, is, as we already said, the success factors, it's important to accurate selection of patients with long loop bus avoid skeletonization of the vast and preservation of the strip of peritoneum over vast and of the anastomotic arcades within the French spermatic artery. When possible, it is important to spare the gubernaculum. Two stage offers a small but significant advantage over one stage. La open laparoscopy seems to be the same in terms of success rate, recurrence and atrophy rate. And then testicular, there's no testicular volume reduction of stage one polystevens or ketopexy and testicular volumes are smaller after stage two follow Stevens, both in the short and long-term follow-up in the majority of patients. We know that germ cells survive division of the spermatic vessel of the intra-abdominal testicle, and then an interval of six, eight weeks between stage one and stage two seems adequate to preserve testicular function. The final conclusion is that it seems likely that some testicular volume reduction following Fallis Stevens might be to have normal testicular development rather than vascular compromise. Thank you. Th thanks, Salvo. It's a, it's a great uh, review of the literature. I uh, pass the microphone to Martin, who will introduce Professor Shada. Okay, great. So the second speaker um, of tonight's session is Professor Shehata. Um, Sami Shehata is a professor of pediatric surgery um, at the University of Alexandria, Egypt. He's uh, on top of the current president of the VOFAPS <laughs> in the past. Um, he has been president of various societies such as the IPAC Middle East chapter, the Egyptian Association of Pediatric Surgeons, APSA, and he has been the past chairman of his um, own department um, at the Faculty of Medicine, University of Alexandria in Egypt. Dr. Shehata is an innovator uh, of the technique of laparoscopic traction for the intra-abdominal testis known as the Shehata technique that is widely practiced uh, now in many centers worldwide. Um, and um, Dr. Shehata is the founder of the largest online pediatric surgery forum, maybe you're part of it too, called the Pediatric Surgeons Lounge where over 3,000 pediatric surgeons around the world are discussing and exchanges, uh, exchanging experience every day. Um, he is among the editorial board of many national and international journals. And um, he has chaired as a speaker, keynote speaker, moderator, panelist in more than 250 national and international meetings. <clears throat> so on top, like uh, the other speaker we have just listened to, um, we have invited today, he's a great person and um, we really have become um, good friends in the past years. So Sameh, it's uh, both an honor and a pleasure to have you here tonight with us and listen to your talk uh, on the Shehata technique of undescended uh, testes. Please, Sameh. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Martin. It's actually a great pleasure to join the UPSA in this series of very interesting web seminars. 
and uh, to join this wonderful audience coming from different parts around the world. I would like to send my regards to, to you uh, for the invitation uh, to Professor Zani. I uh, truly enjoyed the uh, wonderful presentation of uh, Dr. Cashew. And actually, I think I'll use uh, some facts for, uh, from it in my presentation. Now, uh, let me show you briefly, this is uh, our pediatric surgery children hospital in Alexandria by the seaside, if you can see here. And this is a view, we're taking advantage of this angle. Actually, this is the library of Alexandria. Uh, and this is at the hospital, children's hospital. So we, we are very lucky we have this very close proximity and wonderful view we see each morning from the operating theater windows. I invite you all to be my guest. Uh, this is the library and this is the inside of the library. It's a truly magnificent uh, architecture with combination of history and modern digital uh, libraries. Now, uh, let's go for uh, a look, a philosophical look on the Fowler Stephen, very nicely <clears throat> presented by Dr. Cashew. When you have a high intra-abdominal testis, you cannot bring it down. You cut the main blood supply in order to bring it down. This is the main philosophy of Fowler Stephen. <clears throat> and uh, now, uh, a lot of people are asking me, uh, where did you get this idea from? And I'll tell you an observation that almost any one of you ha have seen it every day. This is a huge, long-standing inguinal hernia in a child. And look what we have seen a uh, long time ago when I dissected the hernia sac. Uh, you can see here remarkable elongation of the spermatic cord. And you can see the testis reaching to the knee region of the child. This attracted my attention and I thought to myself, since it can happen, then let's make it happen for the intra-abdominal testis. And this is uh, a diagram of what is the main idea about the Shehata technique. Uh, if you look here. Sorry. Yes. Uh, this is again the same situation. We have a testis, high intra-abdominal testis, but instead of cutting the main blood supply, we fix it to the contralateral abdominal wall with a single stitch and leave it there for some amount of time where elongation will happen. And then you can bring it down without any tension and without dividing the testicular blood supply. You might say now too good to be true or uh, does it really happen apart from animation, especially if you know that my 12 year old son made this animation for me. So <clears throat> now we'll try to launch the uh, uh, pool. Uh, uh, let's see if it, it can be working now. And I will ask you which technique you prefer for an intra-abdominal test is one stage lap assisted or one stage Fowler Stephen, two stage Fowler Stephen, Shahata technique or other. Uh, Gaia, can you help with launching the uh, pool? Uh, yeah, right. Now you are asked, maybe you have four questions and I'll take the opportunity that uh, I'll invite you to answer all the four questions. The first question, which technique is your preference to do this uh, <clears throat> high intra-abdominal testers? And results are coming now, 15% voted. It's always interesting to look at the, uh, how, how different we are in our practice because there is no consensus or no guidelines, but maybe in the near future, we can reach to a consensus. <clears throat> so uh, at least one quarter are doing Shahata technique and the majority, almost 50% are doing two stage Fowler Stephen, one <coughs> stage lap assisted uh, 10% and one stage Fowler Stephen, a minority of 7%. That's good. and. Uh, we should do a follow-up uh, survey after this webinar in a few months. <laughs> yeah. How many then do the Shiata technique? <laughs> yeah, hopefully the numbers will increase, but 
but 20, I think now uh, it's uh, almost 20 percent, yes, uh, one fifth. Good. Now we move on to the next slide. Uh, what are the age limits? There was a question from the audience. What is the age limit? We started with 12 months as a low limit, but now we are moving to younger age that's nine months or even six months. There is no maximum age, of course. And preoperatively, you need to have an empty bladder, an empty colon, because you are working on the pelvis. And this is a, a brief outline of the setup, uh, very similar to the Fowler Stephens. I've done a lot of Fowler Stephens in the past, and they'll tell you my own personal comparison between both of them. It's a surgeon standing at the head of the table and the monitor at the foot of the patient. And here is the table and assistant. Again, very similar trocar positions, uh, five millimeter umbilical and two ports lateral iliacs, uh, three or five millimeters uh, as you wish. And now let's look at a brief video to show the main steps of the technique. This is uh, one case of intra-abdominal testis. You look at the normal side and then you go, you can see here, this is testis uh, near to the deep ring on the other side. And you start with pulling the testis up. You pull the gubernaculum. Be careful because the vast uh, difference is usually looping in a low-lying intra-abdominal testis. And under vision, I pull cranially the gubernaculum and I divide under very careful attention with monopolar hook diastermy, but on using a cutting current, short buzzes and uh, under extreme care, so that you are dividing the gubernaculum, and this is the first step. After uh, clearly uh, dividing the gubernaculum, you test the testis against the deep ring on the other side. This is a little bit of uh, peritoneal attachment, very avascular and very easy to mobilize. And this is actually the easy part of the operation. And now it comes to the testing part. It's called the measuring uh, test. If you can bring the testes to the deep ring on the other side without any tension, then this one can come down on one stage without any uh, vessel interruption. Most of the time, it will not. Most of the intra-abdominal testes are high enough. So I come with a stitch exactly one inch above and medial to the anterior sphere iliac spine, ethibon 2O, and I take a single bite to the tonica albuginea of the lower pole of the testis, carefully because the testis is slippery and is tricky. And then you come back through the same route of entry, uh, carefully again with, with enough length of the thread inside the abdominal cavity. This is a wonderful instrument actually where you can pick up the thread easily and take it out uh, from the same uh, skin puncture. This is coming for a very tiny skin puncture at the point of traction. And here, the assistant is holding both ends of the suture outside and is helping as a third instrument to stabilize and help the remaining part of my dissection. Now you can see that there is a little bit of peritoneum lateral to the testicular vessels. Again, a very avascular and safe area. Under direct vision with monopolar hook diastermy, I am dividing and a little bit around the vase, under care again and under vision. And then you see that this is, is almost reaching to within one or two centimeters from the traction point. Now you are tying from outside under the skin. And if there is, uh, this is a very important test. You can see the malleability of the vessels at stage one. Now we come back after 12 weeks, send the patient home. And if you look here, everything is quiet. There is no single adhesion, as you can see here. And there is a remarkable observation here. If you compare it to the first stage, you see the laxity of the vessel now can reach to the top of the abdominal cavity under pneumoperitoneum. The traction point can be cut in one second. And here it is maximum 20, 25 minutes uh, operation time for both stages. Now you are ready to bring the testes down through a new internal ring that is medial to the uh, normal one. This is called the Prentice Maneuver, very nicely demonstrated by Dr. Cashew. And then you make wide opening uh, through the fascia transversalis, not the conjoint tendon, it's too tough. Here, happy ending. You see the test is coming down on the testicular vessels without interruption. 
and reaching very well down to the uh, bottom of the screw. Uh, this was the description of the technique. And here I would like to highlight the importance of where is the traction point exactly. The blue star is at the anterior spheric spine. Our fixation point is one inch above and medial to the anterior spheric spine. It is not fixation to a bony uh, point, it is fixation to the soft belly. It's very important to achieve very smooth traction on the testis. Next, uh, uh, some tricks. The bite in the testis needs to be a broad bite. Follow the curvature of the needle. Don't pull on the thread too much. You need ample amount of thread inside the abdominal cavity before pulling back. Otherwise it will cut through because the testis is fragile. And here you can see a good bite on the testis and a good bite on the abdominal wall. Very important. Now, what is the duration of waiting? Uh, uh, actually, a lot of my friends are using different techniques. Even uh, Darius from Poland is telling me is having uh, very good results with two weeks. We tried everything, but I found the best is between two and three months of waiting. Uh, bringing the testes down can be either through a scrotal incision with a curved clamp in younger boys, less than two years with thin abdominal wall, usually can pass the clamp from the scrotum. And again, if you try to go through the conjoint tendon, this is very heavy muscle to go through. I go through a very thin layer of uh, fascia transversalis, which needs a little push you are inside the abdominal cavity. Now, uh, this is bringing uh, down the testis from an inguinal incision. If you have an older child with thick abdominal wall, you make a small, I don't like fighting my way in surgery or in life, I like to go gently. So I make a small inguinal incision, pass the testis and then deliver it to the scrotum. Uh, now we published our preliminary studies in Pediatric Surgery International 2009 on a small number of cases. And we published on uh, Journal of Pediatric Surgery 2015 on a larger number and more robust data. This was the BAPS short lecture 2015. And what is the success rate with intra-abdominal testes? Uh, can we, your, uh, your success rate with intra-abdominal testes? I think uh, Dr. Keshu has very nicely demonstrated the meta-analysis and results worldwide. It is ranging normally uh, between 70% to 95%. Uh, our own personal results, uh, we have total number of 340, uh, uh, 54 patients. Total overall success is in the range of 88%. We had slip traction, the uh, traction stitch slipped in 70% where we uh, needed to do a redo traction, which was successful. And we define success as a testes of good size and good position after uh, at least six months of follow-up. And this is uh, our total success rate uh, in the range of 88%. Uh, now let's talk about complications, internal hernia with none, it didn't happen. I know that uh, many of you will ask me about, does it happen? It never happened, it will never happen. Adhesions, truly it is minimal amount of adhesion. Slip traction in 7%, you can do a redo. Smaller or higher testes, that's the missing 12% uh, either higher or smaller testes. The operative time in stage one is just above half an hour and same for the second stage. And what we have learned some tips and tricks over 15 years of performing this technique. Uh, what is the best social material? We tried everything, but we found the best is we tried Vicryl, we tried Silk, we tried Proline, but we found the best is Ethibond uh, 2O on round needle. So this advice, if you did not start or you're trying to improve, this is the best suture material. Uh, slip traction, uh, yes, we can uh, repeat the technique very easily, no problem. Do we insist in, if you have a, a, a uh, passing through vas and vessels, do you insist on removing the testicular knob, and this again was one of the questions in the uh, pool. 
I'm not sure. I'm, I'm sure it is again a split opinion. Can we launch the results of the poll to see what the audience uh, will see about that? Uh, the success rate is between uh, 80 and 100 percent in 40 percent, and between 60 and 80 percent in the majority of almost 50 uh, percent. I think this is reasonable and practical. Do insist on removing testicular nubbin, almost split opinion uh, as to remove or not to remove. And in case of uh, absent testers on one side, you fix the other side 50 50 exactly. Some people fix, some people do not. I'll give a comment on each one of these. Uh, removing the testicular nubbin, actually, study from a large number of testicular nubbins revealed the absence of germ cells which denotes very low potential for developing malignancy. So probably you don't need to remove testicular nubbin. Uh, if you have a single test, do you fix it or not? Well, I have an argument. <clears throat> if you see a single case of loss of a single test, then probably you will, you will do fixation. And I have seen it. And many of my friends, single test, not fix it and on follow-up got torsion and got lost. So probably a single case is enough. And I think it's a good advice to fix a single test. Now we'll go back. Uh, good question. When you have a bilateral interabdominal test, can you do crisscross bilateral traction at the same time? Actually, we used to do this successfully in many cases, but we find in some cases there is adhesion between the vas and vessels of both sides, a situation I'm sure that you don't like to come through when you have the vas and vessels of both sides and you need to separate from each other. So we stopped doing bilateral similar same time because of vas and vessel adhesion, which happened in almost one third of the cases. We managed to dissect, but there is a potential risk. So I prefer that we do it on three stages instead of two. So first stage on one side, then you move to the uh, uh, first on the other side and second on the same side. So three stages instead of two. <coughs> uh, these are the alternative and these are the three stages. First on one side, then second on the same side and first on the other side. This is an algorithm to suggest what we do when we uh, have an impalpable test by laparoscopy. If you find the blind ending vas and vessels, terminate, do PEXI on the other side. If you find the testes, you do the measuring test. If it goes to the uh, other side without any tension, then you bring it down without any uh, maneuver. But I remind you, this is rare for any intra-abdominal testes. If it doesn't reach there, then you do something. And I suggest you two-stage shihata operation. If you have a vas and vessel passing through, then you do inguinal exploration. Now, uh, this is a summary of our results. Uh, the majority of intra-abdominal tests, 80% are amenable to shihata technique. 10% uh, which are abnormally high as subrenal tests or more than three, four centimeters above the deep ring, they are not suitable for shihata technique and still you can do uh, Fowler-Stephens but 10%, there are long vessels and you can bring it down on a single stage. In order to bring it down, it needs to reach the contralateral without, I again say it many times, without any tension, because you can bring it with tension and say to the people, look, it's coming, no, and you leave your hand, it recalls immediately back. You should leave it without any instrument and should stay there. This is very rare in intra-abdominal testing. Uh, do we need to divide the gubernaculum? Again, Dr. Cashew has mentioned the um, importance, but here uh, I, I don't need to keep the gubernaculum. It give me difficulty in the second stage and I have the main blood supply uh, with me, so I don't need more vascularity. The looping vas, I need to remind you that it is not present uh, in, uh, in each case, so not each case is suitable for Fowler-Stephens. But in shahata technique, you need to be careful. 
because the vas normally is looping down and if you are trying to divide the gubernaculum you might cut the vas if you are not careful enough so in any low intra-abdominal testis be careful for a uh, looping vas uh, uh, this is a warning and uh, in case of absent testis yes this is a universal question i've been through may maybe 35 countries around the world and the first question i get from all uh, surgeons uh, that is about internal herniation and internal strangulation and i'm happy to tell you that after 15 years of practice many centers around the world are doing the technique none of them had any case of internal herniation actually i'll tell you a secret once i was trying to demonstrate to the trainees some fact and i tried to bring the bowel behind the testicular vessels at operation i couldn't do that so probably due to some anatomical reasons it can never pass through so wide space be behind and you don't have to worry about internal herniation it never happened it will never happen so let's talk about the evidence that uh, there is len actual lengthening that happens uh, this is what you normally see at the first stage this is a very limited mobility of the testicular vessels after fixation when you come back after eight weeks or 12 weeks you look first all the bowel is just in front of the testicular vessel never behind Number two, there is no single piece of adhesion. Number three, most important, you see the remarkable lengthening, at least four to six centimeters. This is all what we need. And you can bring it even lower than the uh, level of the bottom of scrotum in the majority of cases. What else uh, can we dream of? Uh, we are sure that there is lengthening, but we are not sure what is the mechanism, but these are possible explanations of what will cause lengthening either the gentle respiratory movement of the abdominal wall very gently stretching every day one millimeter of the vessels or more uh, likely that the weight of the small bowel very gently stretching on the testicular vessels leading to bending and so uh, elongation after the period of time most important that this needs to be very gradual and gentle so in conclusion mr chairman ladies and gentlemen the technique is suitable for the majority of intra-abdominal testing it is safe it is reproducible with ease a lot of people have a very short learning curve uh, doing it and it is leads to effective elongation which we can see it by our own eyes and it is uh, uh, most important it preserves the testicular blood supply. I'm happy that many centers around the world are doing the technique now. I receive uh, co comments and emails about the techniques, details, and about results. I see there are many believers every day, and I hope the 20% uh, ratio we've seen today will come to more if we do the survey uh, after some time. And uh, I'm happy that it is published in many uh, recent um, versions of the atlases this is uh, holocom pediatric laparoscopy and thoracoscopy and uh, uh, this is a video atlas of pediatric surgery by martin lacher and the espes manual of pediatrics all the recent versions contain one chapter about shahada technique so in conclusion ligation of the spermatic vessel during intropexy this is uh, this comes a uh, very important paper comes from um, journal of urology that says that despite preservation of the volume of the testes there is significant reduction of spermatogonia this is by pepe sally and this is a landmark paper i i think you need to look at it so despite the volume there is remarkable uh, uh, impairment of the histology so if you'd like to compare, I've done a, a, a large number of Fowler in the past, and let me try to compare. OR time is much shorter for Shahata technique, and the waiting period is two to three months compared to the majority of people doing it at six months, and the adhesions are much less. I have done the second stage Fowler, and many times I found a lot of adhesions, and uh, most importantly, the technically, 
is uh, reproducible and very easy to perform. So uh, this is a paper by uh, Pepe Sally, uh, volumetric and histological findings in intra-abdominal testers. And uh, my final question to you, if you have the same, almost the same amount of success rate when you are cutting the main testicular blood supply, or if you are preserving the main testicular blood supply, if I can just simply stretch it, why should I cut it? Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Sameh, for the uh, beautiful uh, talk. Um, both speakers, uh, congratulations for two very nice um, uh, talks. May I um, start with the, with the first question for um, Sameh? Um, on, your, on your map, you can, I, I, I noticed that Germany actually is still the gray zone. So you can add maybe at least in Leipzig one, yeah. one spot because I, I took over your technique after listening to one of your talks in Croatia two years ago. And the question I have, um, in the beginning, we had a lot of patients with this, you, you call it slip traction. So the traction suture ripped out when, when you wanted to go for the second stage, the, the, the testicle was not attached to the abdominal wall anymore. But what we also noticed that there was still lengthening of the testicle. So, uh, so our hypothesis was that maybe it does need only a couple of days or weeks that it lengthens. And when by that time it rips out, it's still okay. What is, what is your experience? So I, I think the lengthening happens in the first days or, or weeks following the, um, the PEXI. That's absolutely true, uh, Martin. Uh, I think it happens. And uh, I told you many of my friends are advising me to have shorter period of uh, waiting uh, like Darius, for example, is happy with two weeks. And as you uh, clearly mentioned, it happens in a few days, but I would like to make sure that I have uh, absolutely tension-free testers. So I wait, I try to compare many waiting periods. I found the best between two and three weeks. In order to minimize the slip traction you, you mentioned, we had it more in the uh, initial series, now no more. Uh, let me summarize, uh, good bite in the testis, good bite in the abdominal wall, uh, deep bite in the testis, and avoid shearing when you are taking the stitch to cut through the testis. And when you are tying the last point, you press on the abdominal wall to go back to the testis, don't pull the testis towards the abdominal wall. We have no more uh, slip traction uh, these days. Okay. So Thank there are a lot you. of questions in the in the chat. Uh, Sam, I think uh, both of you have uh, already touched on. Uh, but what, this uh, is from uh, um, uh, Ashwarur. Is it true that bigger boys are difficult candidate for uh, either the Shiata technique or the Fuller Stevens? Uh, from my side, this is true. I didn't uh, compare the groups, age groups, because the best is between one and two years. This is almost 90% success rate. Two to six years, it's coming to uh, 80% or 75. Above six years, it's less, it's 65. So the younger, the better. Okay. Well, reviewing the Father Stevens, our age and height does not make any difference, you know, according to what the literature says. In my personal experience, it, sometimes it does because it was a huge length, you know, it's quite more difficult. But it all depends on what test will you got. If you've got a long loop bus with good bus with good collaterals, it's, it's going to be okay. But the literature suggests age and height does not make any difference. I have a question for Samet. Can I ask a question? I was yeah, about please. to ask you, Salvo, do you have a question for Samet? Because that would be... Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. Sure. No, I mean, the, 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 there is any contrary. I know it's, it's, it's not clear to me when would you use uh, the, the, your technique. So, for example, if you got any limit, I know you, you assess bringing it to the contralateral side, but if the test, for example, is within two centimeters from the internal ring or more than two centimeters, or for, for example, for a very high testicle, you know, intra-abdominal testicle. This is a, your technique works because this is a difficult group. You know, the European Society of Pedagogy says we should do the forest even for, for the one who are more than two centimeter. So because the, the video was quite a low testicle. So do you use for all intra-abdominal or for the, 
have you got any selection criteria to choose which one is going to work? Because this is, the, I think, the critical bit, you know, in my opinion. Yeah, very important question, Dr. Kakashu. Um, actually, the, it's not important the distance be, be from the deep ring because some cases, and, and my assistant telling me this is a low test, then you try to bring it down. When I try to bring it down, it just goes beyond the pubic tubercle with, with extreme difficulty, so I bring it back. So the test is for all intra-abdominal tests, you try to measure against the deep ring on the other side. If it goes comfortably, bring it down in one stage. If it doesn't, then do shahata technique. The only cases which are not suitable for shahata technique are extremely high testes above three, four centimeters above the deep ring, which is like the subrenal testes. This is less than 10 or 5% of the whole. And because it doesn't reach the other side easily, I, I still do follow Stephens. But again, some of my friends said that you can leave the string of uh, suture uh, free in the abdominal cavity and you pull it. This is, I didn't try, but I'm happy with 80% of the total number of intra-abdominal tests doing well with Shahata technique. Thank you. So me, there is another question in the chat from Mitul, uh, and he wants you to comment on that. He does not uh, paxi the testicle with a suture, but he creates a, an, um, a peritoneal, extra peritoneal pocket and places the testicle in that pocket. What do you think of that modification? It is the Ashra Nur modification of the Shehata, maybe, in the future? Or? Yeah, what's nice is it? A lot of my friends are, are stimulated by the technique and they're trying to actually to suggest some modification. But, but so far, it is, uh, there is something in football, they say, or in sports, never uh, change a winning game. And I'm winning with this, uh, so I'm not planning to change. The answer is uh, putting a pouch outside the abdominal cavity, cyelastic pouch, theoretically is nice, but technically there are a lot of problems of migration and uh, adhesion and so forth. You have a nature made uh, cyelastic cavity, uh, which is a peritoneal cavity. It's a gift from God, so use it. We never had adhesions. When you take the testes outside the abdominal cavity, extreme adhesions. So we are lucky. We are lucky to have the peritoneal cavity. We never had adhesions. We have a very successful uh, long-term, more than 10 years now. Thank you. And, and uh, Sameh, I don't know if you touched on this. You said you go through the, um, you, you create basically an opening. Uh, um, um, do you, or is there any uh, disadvantage of using the inguinal canal and going through the inguinal canal when you do your second stage? Well, uh, one time um, we were operating and uh, uh, light source went off by 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 chance and then suddenly i can see the lights from the theater shining through the abdominal wall from the black uh, uh, abdominal cavity at that time because no light source and then i can see that the area of the fascia transversalis is very thin it transmits lights from outside and it's only one millimeter you push the clamp you are in Compare it to the very, I tried to give you the video. I, I shoot it, this video. It's really wonderful. Uh, if you try to pass through the conjoint tendon, which is the heaviest part of the musculature of the abdominal wall, you are forcing your way and you are creating a lot of damage. While if you pass through, it's only the peritoneum and fascia transverse. That's a small neck with a, a mosquito you are in. Another question on the <clears throat> size of the testicle after the shehata technique. So Fadi Adwan asks, why the atrophy in the shehata technique happens when the main vessels are not divided? And Dirk van Delft uh, from South Africa is, is, is asking, um, has there been any histological or volumetric analysis of your shehata technique? Yes, uh, for uh, uh, volumetry, of course, we, we check all our, all our testicles by uh, color Doppler for vascularity and the de detailed uh, resistive indices of vascular supply of the testis and volume compared to the normal side or to the normal standards. 
and anything uh, less than 25% from normal is considered failure. So our, our 88% results is good vascularity and good size, which is documented by Doppler and vascular supply. And for the, uh, why should it happen when we have uh, the vessels intact? The intra-abdominal thesis is a problematic, uh, whatever you do by, by any technique, by the Fowler, by Shahata. And if you can achieve 88% up to 90% success of good vascularity and good size, I think this is remarkable. And even we can improve our results in the future by better technique. Okay. Um, uh, one of our friends, uh, Vlad David, uh, sent us also a um, link to uh, a paper that was uh, published just a year ago, laparoscopic stage spermatic vessel sparing procedure for intra-abdominal undescended testes. I'm not familiar with the paper. I've just gone through very quickly. Of course, it mentions the, the Shiata technique. Uh, and this is something that uh, we can, of course, uh, uh, look at uh, and uh, with, with, with a bit more time and uh, um, and review. Uh, I don't see any other questions in the chat, Martin. Uh, oh, me me one, neither. Exactly. Now there's Mitul has another question. Do you want uh, any situation ever experienced by the panelists that, that the baby, the testis, doesn't want to be born, so that you cannot really. Uh, anchor the testicle down into the scrotum that it doesn't reach. Have you ever seen that? Uh, you mean after the second stage of operation? I believe so. Well, uh, that's a good technical question because in the majority, which is uh, exactly reaching 88% of the cases, it comes down to a reasonable position, either mid or bottom of the scrotum. But sometimes you feel that you need one more, one centimeter or two. What I do, I go inside the abdomen and I dissect the peritoneum over the proximal vessels with a hook, the thermi. And by doing so, at least you gain two to three centimeters of more length. So pulling from outside and you elevate the peritoneum over the proximal vessels very near to the ureter. Be careful because you see the ureter always at this side and you just divide the peritoneum, you get two or three centimeters of more less gift from God. Uh, can I add my, my bit? Yes, I think, you know, yes, it is possible. You end up with a very short cord. And then the problem is the more you mobilize, the more you try to bring the testicle down, the more you're going to divide the famous collaterals, which have been mentioned in my talk, which are essential for the testicle to survive. So the more you mobilize, the more you fiddle, the more you end up with a stick atrophy, unfortunately. So yes, I have come across a situation, I have ended up into stick atrophy or in a very small testicle, and because the more you, you skeletonize the vas, the more you destroy the collateral, the more mobilization you do to the testicle, the more likely it's going to be that your forest even is not going to work because you're relying on these arcades, which obviously are in this strip of peritoneum. So that's the risk of um, excessive mobilization. Salvo, may I ask you <clears throat> another question? So, um, of course. when you have a when you do laparoscopy and you have like a peeping testis, where you're not sure should you bring it down at the same session or maybe do a Fowler Stevens? How do you deal with those? Grays so for for peeping, I open the canal and I do a formal opiopexy. We try to and then and then the worst scenario, I'll leave at the pubic tubercle and I go second stage afterwards. And that was second stage, three or six months. You know, really three months is enough, but sometimes waiting list is, is, is a problem. So I tend to go back as second stage. So if they, for peeping testicle, I never do a forest even. I open the canal, divide the, the annual sac as much as as proximal as possible, try to maximize, and don't divide the vessel as well. I try to bring the testicle down and do a second stage with an intact vessel three months down the line if I can. Only a leaf for mm -hmm. high intra-abdominal <laughs> test for first event. So, I tr you know, and also the ESPU and the AUA suggest try to preserve the testicular vessel as much as you can. So it really is the last resort for a Steven for high intra-abdominal testicle, in, in my opinion. Thanks for clarifying. Uh, Amir raises his hand. Yeah, uh, actually the peeping test, this is a very tricky uh, case because it's tempting 
that you can do it with uh, inguinal expiration. But if you follow the results of a peeping or true intracanalicular testis, the atrophy rate is very high. The ascending testis rate is very high. This is well documented in the literature. And I have very bad uh, experience with trying to bring down uh, a peeping testis down on one stage. So what I do, I, I mobilize it, I take it back and I do a two-stage shahata technique much better for a, a good uh, location and good vascularity of a peeping testis rather than trying to pull it hard and wait for six and 12 months, you find it gone or vanished. Trying to fix it to the pubic tubercle, if you tried this technique before, it's a hell of a job on the next stage, going through extreme adhesions and you probably injure the vas and vessels, it's, it's a hell of a job. So if it's not coming comf comfortably to the bottom of scrotum, at stage one, put it back, do two-stage shahada technique. All right, we seem to end with even more controversy than we started. <laughs> I, I like that. This is beautiful. No, I, mean, I, I, think, I think it's interesting, you know, I have not tried shahada, so I, I, I'm intrigued by technique. I think it's certainly worthwhile trying. And uh, I mean, I did last week uh, one of these tests when I went the second stage where Bianchi approach, you know, high scrotal incision came down easily. So the options are there. She had a uh, certainly or a livia pubic tubercle and then going back in three months to a Bianchi transcrotal approach is another option. Yes, there are fibrosis, but I mean, it can be, can be divided with gentle bipolar and bring the testicle down without any trouble. I've done, you know, this week, whatever, the last operating list. So, but I, I totally get uh, some at point. I think it's an interesting technique. I have to try, so I can't make comment, but I, I think it's, it's certainly an option. Uh, and it, and you're not put off by the fact that you're transfixing the testicle. I mean, I know that it was mainly based on animal studies of some years ago, but there was this uh, concept that if you transfix the testicle, you might uh, create some autoantibodies. Uh, and uh, it's one of the one of my mentors uh, from 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 London um, was in fact uh, uh, very much against uh, the transfixing uh, of the of the testicle. And so, in the cases in which there was one of the questions from Salvo. Uh, what do you do if uh, there is a nubbin? Uh, if you excise it, do you fix the other one? I usually don't uh, um, exactly for that for that reason. Uh, I leave things uh, as they are. Do you think there is, as a urologist um, uh, specialist, do you, do you think that this is just uh, a totally benign uh, action? Because also your, your stitch has to be a proper stitch through the through, through the testicle, it cannot be too superficial. Yeah, the, the point is uh, uh, the anti-sperm antibodies uh, are documented in the adult uh, post-pubertal uh, children where there are sperms which they can excite uh, anti-sperm antibodies which are not there for children. And again, this has never been documented in children and that the stitch is taken actually a broad stitch to the tonica albuginea, which is thick and fibrous and can hold the stitch without traversing the parenchyma. So uh, the sperm antibodies is for the post pubertal uh, cases, and you take the good bite to the tonica albuginea, which is really thick. So if you find a, a nubbin and you do you fix the other testicle or you leave it alone? No, I fix it because I have seen uh, some cases not fix it and lost the, the single testis, not single case, and many of my friends. So if you compare having injury from one stitch or losing the single testis, then you know the answer. Salvo? Um, well, that's very controversial. I tend not to fix it, and that was actually... You know, I, I look at the literature and there was a meta-analysis, I look at it, and they, and they were saying there's never been documented, you know, when there's a vanishing test is to have a contralateral torsion. Uh, but again, one of those things, if you ever, probably ask under urologists, they will get 50 uh, different answers, you know. But when I look to this, I found a meta-analysis, they said basically it's never been documented at torsion of the contralateral test, but Dr. Shiata is saying that he has seen it. I've never seen myself. Uh, therefore, I tend not to fix it, but I know a lot of centers where they do. 
the only scientific answer I have is that reading this meta-analysis, I've, you know, they didn't see, they only saw 4%, I think, complication rate and no contralateral torsion. So the evidence is, can be either way, I suppose. You know, I, I don't normally do at the moment. So some may, may ask you this 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 question. I I also believe what what Salvo just just said. The nubbin or or the the vanishing test is, is sort of like an in utero extravaginal torsion, right? So why should the other testicle torus, which is usually a, a bell clapper phenomenon, intravaginal torsion? So what do you think the the pathogenesis of a torus? Um, testicle after having a nubbing on the other side is? Well, th theoretically, you, you are right because it's extra vaginal torsion that does not happen later on in life. But uh, what? how can you explain the, the cases I have seen by myself? And this was a tragedy, actually, to lose a single testis for me and for many of um, uh, my friends. Maybe coincidental bell clapper abnormality or high investment of the tonica or mm. whatever I've seen it um, must be uh, yeah yeah so it's so little possibility according to statistics but uh, sometimes as you know one case is enough one case if serious enough uh, is enough to do pixie for all it doesn't take five minutes to, uh, to fix two stitches for all uh, vicarel to the septum dartos it's true, it's human nature. We look at evidence, we want to do it, and then with N equals one, we change what we've done for many, many years. That's, mm -hmm. um, I think we can keep going and asking questions and because we have uh, still uh, so many unanswered questions, but I think we should uh, come to an end, Martin. Yes, um, I think we need um, to, I, I still think it was really worth taking the time also, Salvor's uh, very nice literature review. I've never seen uh, such a thorough reviews. So I will go back to watch the video again to to make sure I catch up all this this information. Um, Thank you, Martin. I'm sorry I have to rush at the end. You know, sorry about uh, that. You know, but uh, there was a lot of uh, points. You know, to to flag. You know. Sorry. Very, very yeah, I think we can close. And uh, thank you, Gaia, also uh, behind the scenes. She was, um, yeah, there she is. Thank you again for also for Thanks, uh, Gaia. for rehearsing last night with the two speakers to make sure everything is um, going smooth as usually. Yes. And success uh, of the pools. This is one of the most important achievements. Of course. Thank All right. you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank Thank you. Thanks, bye everybody. Hope so to much. see bye. you soon. Bye. Bye. Ciao. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye-bye.